Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Caffeinated? <laughs> Too much is never enough when it comes to coffee. Um, good morning. I'm Henry Berman from Exponent Philanthropy. I know I have not met all of you. I hope to try and do that in the next couple days. So um, help me meet my challenge by seeking me out and at least saying hello and introducing yourself. And I want to welcome you to our 2018 National Conference. And I'd like to start by spending a few minutes and sharing with you a story. It goes back to when I was a young child. And at that time, I was fascinated with exploring how things worked. If, uh, if an electrician or a plumber showed up at our house, I would tag along and look over their shoulder trying to understand everything. I think my favorite was the, and I'm probably dating myself here, but the TV repairman who would show up and he'd take the back of the set off and there'd be this entire world of glowing tubes and wires. And I was just fascinated. So it was really no surprise that I was probably in fifth or sixth grade. One of the electric cords on a table lamp in our house was damaged somehow. And I obviously felt fully qualified to open up the lamp, <laughs> diagnose the situation, trek down to the local hardware store to get the parts, make the repairs, and then just sit back and wait for praise from my parents. So that's exactly what I did. And guess what? The lamp worked. And that was all I needed to set me off on this path of looking for other lamps that may have needed repair. And I was on a roll. I did new cords, I did switches, I did a f even a few wall sockets. I was just humming. Until one day I clearly, as they say, got my wires crossed. <laughs> I pressed the pl prongs of a plug into the wall. There was a flash, a little bit of smoke, a sore set of fingers, and one really scared kid. And, and I mean seriously scared. Scared to the point where it began a short period in my life when I was reluctant to even flip the wall switch on in my bedroom. My biggest demon was plugging something into the wall. The thought of it just paralyzed me. The fear of being shocked again stopped me in my tracks. And then, of course, the inevitable happened. My classroom teacher, Miss Raleigh, she wheels into the class a, a one of those rolling carts with a film projector on it. She unwraps the extension cord and pre she proceeds to call on me, on me, whole class of kids. She calls on me to take the end and plug it into the wall. So if you're familiar with the expression about the deer being caught in the headlights, that was me. I was frozen for what I'm sure was seconds, but it probably felt like hours at the time. And thinking back, I guess I probably had two choices. I could take the cord and face my discomfort or I could proclaim to my teacher and my classmates that I was afraid to even try. And I'm pretty sure that if I'd chosen the latter, the reasons why would not have mattered one bit to any of them. So why then, decades later, am I sharing this with you? I'm, I'm pretty much out of the electric repair business, and um, I can assure you it's not to relive the embarrassment of the moment. Well, the truth is, I think about that a lot. I really do, that day in the classroom, because I realized how much I learned in that moment. Because I learned to overcome fears, discomfort, and the unknown. And when we think about our roles as funders, we face these every day as donors and leaders in our communities. Fear, discomfort, and the unknown. Who among us has not been fearful of making an unsuccessful or bad grant. You know, when I first became a trustee of a foundation, I guess about 16 years ago, and there was some real money to grant out, I was incredibly fearful that I'd screw it up. In reality, at that time, as a absolutely small staff foundation distributing relatively small amounts of money in those days, any errors or bad grants 
they'd likely go unnoticed by most people, but probably not by me. Or if you're honest, and if you're really honest, we won't do a show of hands, but if you're honest with yourselves, who here has not been uncomfortable before delivering bad news to an applicant or a longtime grantee or to your board or to a fellow board member? You know, it's, I find it kind of ironic that the power that's attributed to all of us as funders can sometimes make us incredibly uncomfortable. And I freely admit to putting off doing things where I'm not certain or at least pretty darn sure that I know the outcome. It can, it can be scary in the dark. In many ways, the unknown represents the ultimate blind spot for each of us as funders. After all, it's hard to see things that we, whether consciously or unconsciously, choose not to see. Now, some may argue, why, are, why as funders do we need to see everything? I know what I want to fund. Isn't that really all that matters? And to that person, to those people, I say, of course it matters. You know, one of the beauties of our system of philanthropy, of, of using foundations, donor advised funds, checkbooks, charitable trusts, of our ability to give with the vehicle or vehicles that we choose, is that each of us has the opportunity to decide what we want to support. We may at times be frustrated with government forms or regulations or oversight, but you know, in reality, we have great freedom to distribute funds as we please. We can give it to the symphony, to medical research, to religious education, to protect the environment, to educate children. We can do it locally, we can do it nationally, we can do it abroad, and we can do it any mix of those. And as an association, Exponent Philanthropy is always going to support your freedom to make those choices. That's really important. But we will push you to give it in smart, effective ways that maximize your impact. And to do that, we all need to explore and understand the greater society of which we're a part. We simply can't operate in a vacuum. We can't knowingly or unknowingly wear blinders that constrict our vision. We all practice philanthropy in a world that's bigger than any one of us. And we need to be cognizant of the trends that affect each of us and our grantees. And those are often in different ways. So regardless of your area of funding, or frankly how you feel about them, movements such as Me Too, Black Lives Matter, anti-bullying campaigns, they affect all of us. And they affect the people in the organizations that we support. Whether you think climate change is real or not, there's no legitimate argument against recognizing that we're currently in a period of increasingly more powerful natural disasters. We can say the same kind of thing about migration, changing gender norms, technology, all of which play ever greater roles in changing our world. As part of a foundation myself that supports early childhood literacy, I find myself thinking about how technology is going to impact the classroom of the next decade. And what should I be learning about and funding today, which is probably very different from how I learned to read in anticipation of tomorrow. I may long for those good old days, but change doesn't give me that luxury. If we fail collectively as funders to recognize and embrace change in the world around us, I believe we're each doomed to lo lose the impact that we all work so hard to achieve and to talk about. A, uh, a few weeks ago, a colleague on the staff told me that they received a phone, had a phone conversation with a member who during the course of the call, the member indicated that they were using a rotary dial telephone. I've extrapolated from that, that that this woman may well keep her foundation records on paper ledgers and using sharp pencils. And you know what? That's great. But I also know she can't pretend that smartphones and online banking haven't become integral parts of today's world. None of us, none of us can do our best work, work that has long lasting impact if we're not relevant. And no one can make that happen more than ourselves. To be relevant, therefore, we need to take the time to face our fears, the uncomfortable, and learn about the unknown. 
like now. So in a few minutes, I'm going to have the honor of introducing Suzanne Barakat, a medical doctor, board chair of the R3 Winners Foundation, and like most of you, a member of Exponent Philanthropy. She's going to share her personal story that begins with hate and ends with hope for a better world. Every time I hear it, I feel painfully uncomfortable and at the same time incredibly inspired. Her story helped open my eyes to issues of hate and fear and tragedy, which she is so effectively turning into love and knowledge and possibility. Tomorrow on this stage, Anthony Simmons from the Association of Black Foundation Executives, or ABFI. He's going to present contextual history that's important and indeed, I would say, critical for all of us to better understand the world we live and work and fund within. And to close our conference on Sunday, Tiffany Defu, the author of Drop the Ball, will help us put what we've learned into perspective by offering actionable advice on how to clarify what matters most to each of us and how we can then use that to excel in our own chosen work. To those who wonder, does this really all matter? Again, I say, of course it matters. We're living in a time of incredible ex expectations of accountability. And that permeates every aspect of our society. We expect those we fund to be accountable to us. And they, more than ever, and in concert with the public, with the government, with media, they hold us accountable to them. Closing the curtains on things we don't like does not make them less significant. And we can't play the role of the young child who squeezes their eyes shut and pretends that they're invisible and therefore everything is okay. Winston Churchill once said that courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. So as you move about the conference these next few days, have the courage to open your eyes and your ears. Listen not to respond, but to learn. And don't be afraid of what you might hear, but be deathly afraid of what you might not hear. I became familiar with Suzanne, our speaker, this morning, earlier this year, as I spent some time reflecting on how those of us in philanthropy, and I include myself here as a foundation trustee, we've excelled at being reactive to crises. I fully appreciate that I'm generalizing to some extent, but when you think about Ferguson and Flint and Baltimore and Charlottesville, for example, it feels like we typically rush in after the fact. And if we're honest with ourselves, we know there are more Fergusons and Baltimores waiting to erupt, more cities and towns with lead in the water, and more hate groups growing in strength. And I find the seemingly explosive proliferation of hate among groups of all types and across the political spectrum to be incredibly troubling. As funders, we have an opportunity to use our power in every sense of the word to get out in front of these crises. We can no longer wait and just react. To do so, I really believe, is to abdicate our commitment to the very heart and soul of philanthropy, the love of humankind.